Hi, I'm James Berger, and this is Nathan Thompson, a student in my lab at UC Berkeley. My group uses structural biology and biochemistry to understand how ATP-dependent molecular motors move and rearrange nucleic acids in the cell to support a variety of fundamental processes such as replication, transcription, and chromosome compaction. The hexameric helicases and translocases are one such type of cellular machine, capable of coupling the binding and hydrolysis of ATP to rapid and precessive movement along nucleic acids or to the separation of nucleic acid duplexes. Hexameric helicases can be divided into two major groups that translocate in opposing directions along single-stranded nucleic acid. Bacteria and their phages typically utilize the 5' to 3' RECA-like hexameric helicases, while eukaryotes and archaea tend to use the 3' to 5' AAA plus hexameric helicases. Despite this evolutionary and functional divergence, both families have evolved from a common protein fold, an alpha-beta-alpha -alpha sandwich containing the Walker A and B ATP binding motifs on one side, and gamma-phosphate sensors typically referred to as arginine fingers on the other side. When this protein fold assembles around a nucleic acid substrate, six bipartite ATP binding sites are formed, capable of hydrolyzing ATP and propelling the helicase along nucleic acids. There are two outstanding questions about helicase mechanism that we wanted to answer during this project. First, how do hexameric helicases couple ATP hydrolysis to processive translocation along nucleic acids? And second, what causes RecA and AAA plus hexameric helicases to translocate in opposite directions? In answering these questions, we were helped greatly by the structure of the papillomavirus E1 helicase bound to DNA and ADP, solved by Eric Enemark and Lamore Joshua Tor. This asymmetric complex allowed the visualization of six steps in a 3' to 5' AAA plus hexameric helicase catalytic cycle. To obtain a complementary structure of a 5' to 3' RECA-like helicase bound to nucleic acid and an ATP mimic, we chose the row transcription termination factor from E. coli, a well-characterized protein studied for many years in our lab. In bacteria, Rho selectively terminates transcription by recognizing and loading onto nascent RNA transcripts at a cytosine-rich RUT or Rho utilization site, translocating in the 5' to 3' direction towards the RNA polymerase, and dissociating the ternary transcription complex at an RNA polymerase pause site. In trying to crystallize a Rho RNA nucleotide complex, we screened a large number of substrate combinations and obtained three different crystal forms. However, only one, diffracting to 2.8 angstroms, proved to contain the desired protein substrate complex. Solved by molecular replacement, the structure of Rho bound to six bases of RNA and six ADP beryllium fluoride complexes contains one complete hexamer in the asymmetric unit. As a result, each subunit of the hexamer displays a unique combination of interactions with the RNA and the ATP mimic, revealing six different steps of the translocation mechanism. The protein subunits form a spiral staircase around the helical RNA, and the RNA binding loops interact almost exclusively with the sugar phosphate backbone. Six bases of RNA are bound to six protein subunits, suggesting that one ATP is hydrolyzed for each base pair translocated. Analysis of the ATP binding sites in our structure reveals four distinct catalytic states. The positions of these ATPase intermediates are immediately suggestive of a sequential rotary ATP hydrolysis mechanism. The structure of Rho leads to a complete model for RECA-like hexameric helicase translocation, revealed here in energy-minimized linear interpolations. Using programs written by the Yale Morph server, the linear interpolations were created by passing the RNA and each subunit of Rho through all six conformations observed in our structure. The left movie shows the RNA binding site in the center of the ring, and the right movie shows the ATP binding site. Both movies are playing in sync. Notice how each RNA base is escorted by a single subunit, rather than handed off to adjacent subunits. And notice how RNA and ATP appear to be cooperatively bound and released. A comparative analysis of Rho and E1 reveals that the two motors bind nucleic acid with the same relative polarity and utilize a very similar sequential stepping mechanism. This means that in order to translocate in opposite directions, Rho and E1 reverse their relative directions of sequential ATP hydrolysis. 
Our structure of row serves as a starting point for understanding hexameric helicases and raises many interesting new questions. For instance, what step of the ATPase cycle serves as the power stroke for the enzyme, and on what time scale do conformational events important for catalysis take place? Similarly, are the operating principles that we have uncovered for Rho extensible to other hexameric motors, such as double-strand DNA translocases, or enzymes that work on protein rather than nucleic acid segments? Finally, can we use our Rho structure to think about re-engineering the molecule and endowing it with new properties, such as the ability to recognize different substrates, or alternatively, to search for new small molecule inhibitors that might be a potential therapeutic or biochemical utility. These and other issues will undoubtedly keep us busy for many years to come. We'd like to thank you for watching and encourage you to read our paper in this issue of Cell for even more insights into hexameric helicase structure and mechanism.